Gervonta Davis and Turkey Alashish saga takes a new spin as recent developments in Saudi Arabia spell that Gervonta Davis is going to get the last laugh on this as most likely they are getting ready to pull out of boxing after a series of failures from Turkey Alashik. The biggest one of which was yesterday in the Arthur Viterbiev Dmitry Bivol fight. As they lose everything, Turkey flips on, on, on Bivol and the pay-per-view show itself is a disaster on many different levels. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon, and in this video, we're gonna be in the 175 pound division where one of my favorite fighters, and I am so happy he won this fight, Arthur Baturbiev beat Dmitry Bivol in a fashion that people did not believe he would be able to, by decision, going the distance for the first time in his career, and beating the former, the former undefeated champion and three belt unified champion. Dimitri Bivol. And a whole lot of people are mad about it. And I am laughing about it. Because I'm laughing at Turkey Alashik. I'm telling you, as I sit safely over here in the United States, I hope, I have witnessed that man act a complete and utter buffoon in front of other human beings in Saudi Arabia, especially last night when he berated, apparently, Dimitri Bivol for losing. But that wasn't the first way, the first, um, that wasn't the start of the day for Turkey Alashik. Turkey Alashik started the day by surprising everybody and charging them $20 for the zone, that terrible, uh, that undercard that did not have any quality fights on it. So, like I said, being a bit of a Dimitri Bivol, I'm not a Dimitri Bivol, but an Arthur Viterbiev fanboy. I really did enjoy seeing how this whole thing played out. Now, as it applies to Gervonta Davis, Gervonta Davis was roundly criticized by people for not begging Turkey Alashik to go to Saudi Arabia for the blessing of fighting him in Saudi Arabia, fighting underneath his banner in Saudi Arabia whenever and however. <laughs> Turkey Alashik tells him to do it, right? So I find the, I, it very, very ironic that Turkey Alashik is clearly pulling back, clearly pulling back from boxing. Now, why do I say that? Look at two things that took place yesterday. Number one, that fight, that actual fight was not in some big stadium. There wasn't any concerts. There wasn't any type of real drama, all kind of stuff around that in that particular card that I saw. It was greatly, greatly scaled down. The actual event and where people were for that fight, it was a very, very small arena. So it wasn't as if this thing was some moneymaker in Saudi Arabia. And they wind up, again, like I said, charging U.S., uh, charging U.S., U.S. subscribers to Zone $20 for the fight after having said it was free. So again, this guy's money is not endless. He is clearly scaling this back. He also just had another big loss because he lost all of the belts. He and Eddie Hearn lost all those belts that Dimitri Bivol had, and they're now sitting over there with Bob Aaron. So they got to cut a deal with Bob Arum to, be, to, to bring uh, Arthur Viterbiev back to, <laughs> back to Saudi Arabia, which means what? Bob Arum is about to stick his hand deep in the pockets, deep in the pockets of Turkey Alashik, as deep as he can get him for that fight. 
You better believe it. And I got to tell you something. Another reason why you guys should understand that or be careful about gambling on boxing. Okay, I'm telling you, you got to be very, 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 very careful when you when you bet on boxing. Do not believe these people that are saying they're there are people out there that are gambling 30, 40,000 and all that stuff, but they don't have but they're not on YouTube channels. Okay? <laughs> I have to wait for like 5 minutes in this video to deliver this message. Stop believing people that are saying they're putting all this money on and winning you know, putting all this money in on fights, bro, they're not putting, that's not real money, okay? It's not real money. They're not losing real money. You're losing real money. Listen to their terrible picks. The fact of the matter is that Arthur Baturbiev, um and Dimitri Bivol, the fight was a very, very close fight. However, there's a very strong argument that, that, that Arthur Baturbiev won that fight. Um, and since, you know, the judges don't listen to the commentators where they start giving you all these statistics and numbers about percentages landed. Um, let me tell you, man, they are giving you those percentages. You don't know if those percentages are accurate and those promo and those judges don't have, they're not scoring off CompuBox. Um, at the end of the day though, I gotta tell you, bro, I love that fight. I'm telling you, I think that we should enjoy this rehab season while it lasts, while it lasts. Because I don't think it's lasting very long. These guys keep losing. The fights keep getting smaller. They keep losing money. And now you have uh, you had um, Bob Arum that was like, no, man, uh, this fight needs to be on ESPN. And now he really has the whole fight. It's going to be real funny to see uh, how we move forward with this. But look, Eddie Hearn sold his soul to the zone. And Eddie Hearn is paying the cost. He is paying the cost. These guys have their entire organizations, their, all their livelihoods set on the whim of Turkey Alashik. And I'm telling you, that's not a safe whim. When you have a guy that is switching up prices on the zone, you have to know, you have to know that, that Eddie Hearn was not happy with that. You have to know that Frank Warren was not happy about switching prices on, on their customers like that. And there, and these guys aren't even allowed to really do their own matchmaking. There's a reason, man. Eddie Hearn and those dudes might not even really wanted Dimitri Bivol to fight Baturbiev. They could have maybe let that thing wait a couple more years, made sure Baturbiev got got older. But the rush to make the fight, hey man, it was a good fight. I really enjoyed it. But it's very hard for you to build organizations, boxing organizations, uh, that last for long periods of times without effective matchmaking. You really can, you can really, you know, I'm sorry for the kind of gross phrase, you can really shoot, shoot your load in a very, very short, in a very, very short amount of time if you do not have good, solid matchmaking. And it doesn't seem like they have it. So at the end of the day, when Gervonta said, look, man, I need, I need two Ferraris just to even talk to you about going over there with all the money that I'm making over here. Now, seeing as those money, that money is shr shrinking, don't look like they're buying any more Ferraris, uh, I think I think Gervonta may get the last laugh on y'all, but we'll see. Maybe he'll lose to Matt Lamont Roach, and you guys can do a whole big thing about cherry picks going wrong. I don't know, but anyway, that's my take on the matter. Please let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Deuces.